Yeah. Um, so again, it's uh, you know that electrical system. It's that computer, and so you have uh, the synapses, which there's billions and billions of them in your brain, and each little synapse has a potential, I think, forty thousand connections. So of the billions and billions, each one can connect to forty thousand individual different connections. So you have um, a lot of information flowing throughout the brain, um, and what will happen is, like with people with PTSD, uh, we create a memory and the synapses will connect to individual parts of the brain that um, create that memory or that, that connection, uh, muscle memory or you know tied to an emotion. Um, so when a guy that has PTSD from a war hears a car that's driving by, you know, do the backfire and freaks out or, you know, hit, hit the ground and, you know, gets pulled right back into that memory, um, that's a synapse that's connected to that sound, to that emotion, to that memory. And, um, it's an electrical signal and the machine can basically tell that, that it doesn't serve the body anymore to have that electrical connection. And so while sitting here and just talking with using the device, we can retrain your brain and retrain your nervous system to not fire incorrectly and go back to that memory that doesn't serve anymore and get new synapses to connect and new things to fire within the brain, new energy pathways, new thought processes. How um, does this work for other neurological disorders like, like schizophrenia or does it kind of work the same way? Yeah. Um, and so things like, uh, like say Alzheimer's, um, I believe, and I know there's other um, people out there that talk about it, doctors and whatnot, that talk about, uh, um, the, again, those synapses in the brain. Um, so if I were to take uh, you know, a cell phone and take a piece of tinfoil and wrap it completely around the cell phone, that creates what's called a Faraday cage, which um, doesn't allow any electrical information in or out of the phone. It's basically oh, cut off. It can't receive any messages, no texts, no nothing. It can send none. So we have you know large amounts of um, heavy metals within our body from our environment, the air that we breathe, the, the food that we eat, the water that we drink. You know, you have fluoride and just about everything. You got horrible stuff in toothpaste and deodorant and shampoo and conditioner and all these things are constantly bombarding our system with these heavy metals along with other toxins and excuse me, things that are not conductive for the body. So because of the synapses and the brain is this electrical unit, um, when all these little filaments of you know, uh, aluminum or barium or strontium or, or mercury get into the body, I think that they cloud those electrical um, firing nodes, the synapses that don't allow the information to escape, just like with the cell phone and the Faraday cage. So the machine will actually help pull those metal, t those metal pieces out um, and allow that electrical conductance to flow again. So we find that people that you know, their parents can't remember their name or, you know, where they are after, you know, short time of, of sessions with the Equiscope. They're now remembering all these things because those heavy metals have been pulled out. Um, and it will adjust the areas in the brain that aren't firing correctly because the body knows what homo homeostasis is. You know, it, uh, it's all programmed within us. Um, it doesn't necessarily need... Um, new information to come in to tell it how to act. It just kind of needs to be reminded of what its natural processes were and be freed up of the things that bog it down so that it can perform at those functions that it, that it knows. I think uh, Cameron was saying that, you know, the body is the amazing healer. You know, no medicine or anything out there does anything that, that heals. It's the body knows and, you know, the genes and everything that are, you know, encoded in us or, or developed because now we're finding that only, I think, 2% of um, genes are coded when you're born. The other 98% are based on your environment and that you learn and gets coded within your body as you grow. Um, so we're not really predetermined to very much of anything other than um, kind of the rough outline of what we look like, hair color, bone structure, mm -hmm. things like that. 
Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe, and two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.